So your question is, what is trending in residential stormwater in the year 2023? It's a great question. There are a lot of wet homes that were just purchased in the last six months and disgruntled new owners because sellers don't disclose these issues. So the question is, what's trending in residential stormwater in 2023? You know, one trend is there's a lot of wet homes that in the last six months Either the ownership changed or maybe even in the last six weeks. Very, very new homeowners that are all of a sudden experiencing water and a lot of sellers that are sliding out and not uh, disclosing the fact that the house was wet. So there's a lot of upset people out there uh, and it kind of comes all at once. Lots of cold tech systems with no pretreatment, no overflows and no observation ports. What we find a lot with these Coltec systems is they don't use pretreatment. So there's no catch basins or T80 storm filters. Coltec makes a great T80 storm filter product uh, to catch solids. There's a built-in screen, obviously in a sump, all your solids are gonna sink um, and you try to baffle them out and only take clean water in. But there are none on a lot of these systems. So there's no access except for some pipe in the yard that we need to navigate. It's usually in bad shape and filled with water. Another thing is no overflows. You have gotta have an overflow. There's gotta be some way to back out all of that energy and pressure inside the system. So you need to have an overflow. Even if it's a small pop-up emitter or something, uh, we always put one in and it always serves us a quick way in as well to, to observe. Which brings me to my next point, observation port. We use a six inch uh, SDR35 pipe, but we wanna have access. So we'll grease a fitting and just put a cap on it uh, or put a clean out I don't really like the clean outs because they stick up and uh, are very obvious in the yard and they're a tripping hazard. Um, but you need an observation port. You need a way into those chambers quick to see what they're doing. It's also good to study to see how the chambers do perform so you know what to expect of the system for the client and how you educate the client on the way. Number three, lots of foul systems that have been rendered useless because solids got into the system. Another thing that we see a lot of is a lot of fouled systems caked up in the base of the chambers or just a slime pit and the stone's just completely covered and it won't infiltrate anymore. Um, doesn't take much. We find that uh, you know, even a fine layer of wet leaves is enough to stifle the system, but a lot of systems we see have a lot of debris in them. Number four are three S's. That's sinking, separation, and silting. So many people take shortcuts when they install pipe and they don't solvent weld. Because of that, pipes fall out of fittings, pipes fall out of uh, connections with other pipes, and we see a lot of separation in the pipe. So we're constantly finding pipes that are just emitting water into the earth around the pipe, creating erosion and uh, sinkholes and that sort of thing, wet yards. So we're correcting those often. Um, it's basically a bad install uh, from the guy before, and that's the issue. Silting is exactly what the name says. Pipes are just filled with silts. It could be fines, it could be sand, it could be gravel, it could be actually pretty large stones, it could be a tennis ball, it could be a Barbie doll, it could be anything in there. And a lot of times what it is is granules from the roof. Residential applications, roof granules, just shed, go inside the gutter, travel down the downspout, and then make their way into the system. So all that silting will actually dam up inside the pipe and hold a lot of water and then the system is stifled, it just doesn't perform right. So we really recommend a routine maintenance, jetting of those pipes, draw everything out, scour the walls of the pipe, get the pipe back in working order and move on. Third S, sinking. By its namesake, we, I, the name says what it is. The pipes go out of pitch because they sink. The reason why they sink is during the backfill process, they don't compact or take enough time to really pack around the pipe. So everything is loosely filled in, the pipe over time then uh, falls because the earth compacts and gravity pushes everything down out of whack. So a pipe really has to be set properly, solvent welded and fixed so that you have some semblance of pitch and you can maintain that pitch. Um, sometimes we use masonry blocks below elbows to hold everything up. Last thing I want to talk about and all you guys out there know who you are, thin wall pipe. Thin wall pipe is our nemesis. Uh, the bulk of our calls from homeowners are because they have thin wall pipe in one way, shape, or form. And it is just the devil, and that stuff cracks and warps. Uh, some of it goes oblong or flat, and some of it just shatters uh, and cracks. But it's easily pierced by roots, it's easily pierced by a false blow from a masonry job or a pick or something, or uh, any kind of damage to the lawn. 
the pipe is very susceptible. It's total junk. It has no business being underground. Please don't use it. It has its purpose elsewhere, but don't bury it. Uh, hang it on the wall. Do something with it. It's a DIY Home, home Depot thing, but please don't put a professional system in with thin wall pipe. 80% of the uh, work we do residentially is because there was thin wall pipe used at some point in the project. This is Frank Hennigan with Connecticut Stormwater Authority, and thank you. Ask for Frank at Connecticut Stormwater Authority.